Hi, it's Amy from Amy Designs, and welcome to my very first floss tube. I'm so excited to um, have this new way of sharing with you the projects that I'm working on, and really looking forward to getting to know you, hopefully interacting in the comments, and sharing some of the projects that I've been working on, some of the things that are coming up, um, and hopefully inspire you to get creative yourself. So the first thing that I wanted to do is introduce myself. Um, my name is Amy, I live in Wyoming, and I am the mom of six kids. They range in age from 19 down to five. Um, one of them is in college now, one of them will be leaving in a year, and then all the way down to kindergarten. It is these kids who actually got me being creative in the first place. Um, of course, I started scrapbooking back in the day when my oldest was a baby. And then I just needed an outlet. I needed something to do that would stay done. I needed a place to just be Amy instead of the mom all of the time. And that is where um, my creative journey began. I started crafting and making cards and then that led into some sewing. And I started a blog, it's almost 13 years old now. And then um, I have a YouTube, um, obviously I have this YouTube channel. I have an Instagram account and um, have started growing a pattern writing business. So I am so glad that you're here and I look forward to getting to know you. Um, I also thought I would share why my blog is called A Marooni Designs. Growing up, my grandma um, had a nickname for me and she always called me A Marooni Bambooni. And so when it came time for me to decide on a name for my blog, um, I wanted something that was kind of unique and creative and something that wasn't taken already. <laughs> so I thought, oh, I'll just use A Marooni. And it didn't really occur to me that that would be like hard to spell, hard to say, <laughs> hard to look up, you know, and people wouldn't really know what that meant. But we're 13 years in, and so I just feel like, you know what, we're just gonna roll with it, and hopefully it's not a deal breaker for anybody. <laughs> um, so with that, talking about my grandma, I thought I would share um, this first finish this is actually a vintage finish so this is a pillow that my grandma who used to call me a Rooney, um made for me back when i was young so i was probably oh eight or nine when she made this for me and i love it she um made one for my sister that matched um hers was pink with a k and um I am just so grateful that it has lasted all of these years. It's such a fun treasure and um, I just absolutely love it. So if you know me, if you're here from Instagram or my newsletter or my blog, you will know that I don't do a ton of cross stitching. I actually, when I was a kid, did a lot of cross stitching. I'm so glad to see it coming back and look forward to kind of jumping into that again. Um, but I haven't been doing a lot of that lately. What I do do a lot of is embroidery. Um, I really like wool applique and I love raw edge applique. So you will find still lots of floss projects, maybe not lots, some floss projects, um, and lots of sewing projects. So um, I'm gonna still call it a floss tube just cause that's what people know it is, but also expect lots of other types of sewing and fun projects as well. So moving on, I want to share some of my most recent finishes and projects. Um, kind of been on a strawberry kick lately. I think you've seen around social media that strawberries are super popular right now. I had the opportunity to work with this new fabric line from Riley Blake Designs called Strawberry Honey. And so I designed this little mini quilt. This mini quilt is a free pattern that you can find on my blog. Um, this strawberry template is also free if you sign up for my newsletter. And um, it's a really fun, quick little finish. And I love how it shows off the bright colors of this fun fabric line. So while I was working on this, I wanted to create some dimensional strawberries to use in my photographs and things. And was kind of struggling to get consistent looks and things with some of the patterns and tutorials that were out there. And so I set about designing my own dimensional strawberry pattern. And so the pattern I came up with is called Juicy Berries. So it has these strawberries in three different sizes and I have used just a floss for the stem. Um, I love that it's just kind of a skinny little um, stem on here, but then you can also use it to hang things from, but you could always swap that out for a ribbon or whatever you wanted to do with it. But they turned out really fun. And so Juicy Berries is a pattern that is available for purchase in my Etsy shop. 
while I've been doing all of these strawberries, I decided um, to revisit this mug rug pattern that I designed last year. So this one is called Summer Fruit, and it is um, a mug rug pattern that has four different fruit patterns in it. So it has these strawberries, it has watermelons, lemons, and cherries. It's a really fun, versatile pattern. Um, again, you can find it in my Etsy shop. But one of the trends that I have really been liking lately is the tear tray um, trend going on. I love that you can just create small little projects for it. And I love how fun they are to swap out for holidays and seasons and things like that. So I have been designing new projects and new ways to use some of the patterns and templates that I already have into um, projects that you could make for tiered trays. So I took the strawberry template from this pattern that is a purchase pattern and I am working on, you can see back here, this little blue pillow with the wool applique strawberries on it. And so my next um, finish or almost finish is an adaptation of that pillow pattern. Um, I just thought it needed a little something extra. So I'm working on the pattern to add these little cornerstones and border to it, um, just to kind of finish it off and give it a little bit more of a polished look. So it's almost done. Um, I'm getting really close, but I'm gonna show you up close this, <laughs> this finish here, because I want you to see that I am not perfect and I don't strive to be. So you can see that some of my seam here, um, seams are off a little bit. Um, corners don't always exactly match up. I am a firm believer in enjoying the process. Crafting is for fun. Creating is life-giving and should not be full of pressure and weight and heaviness. So I do firmly believe there is no crafting police. There is no sewing or stitching or any kind of police. Creativity is the right way to be creative is the way that's right for you. So if you have a method or a technique or something that works for you and somebody tells you it's wrong, just ignore them. <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. However it works for you is absolutely the right way to do it. Does that mean that you shouldn't learn from other people? Absolutely not. And somebody might have a brilliant idea and you're like, whoa, I didn't even think about that. I'm totally going to do that from now on. It's so much easier than the way I've been doing it. But... If it's something that you're like, that's so much harder, let it go, enjoy the process. We're here to have fun and enjoy and be renewed through creativity and not have it be something that is heavy and um, just makes brings us down. So anyway, plan on seeing a lot more strawberries um, over the next couple of weeks as I kind of finish up the last of the projects that kind of, you know, have been spurred on by this really cute fabric and, um, as I go about adapting um, some of these mug rug patterns and fruit templates into more tiered trade decor type projects and patterns that are going to be available soon, hopefully. Um, I have one more finish to share, and that is um, something that I just released on my blog. This is a colored pencil holder. Now you might recognize this pattern. Um, I shared it a year ago on the polka dot chair blog. I was a contributor for Melissa's blog um, and it was so much fun. Melissa is amazing, um, a great creator. I will link to her blog in the show notes, but um, I decided to revisit this tutorial, um, added a template that you can download for free by signing up for my newsletter. And I just think that it's such a fun project for um, car trips or on, the, or on airplane rides. Um, I really love it for church because it's nice to keep the pencils available, but not roll awayable. That's not even a word, but we're going to pretend it is <laughs> so that we don't, I don't have to worry about them all clattering to the floor right when everybody's supposed to be super quiet and things like that. So this colored pencil holder, again, is a free tutorial on my blog. Um, and it's a super fun and quick sew. So going from things that are already finished, um, I thought I would give you kind of a little sneak peek of a couple of things I'm working on. Um, in addition to finishing up the pattern for the tear trade pillows, um, I also am going to start working on a new embroidery project. This is from a pattern in Bev McCullough's new book. Um, I was just gonna look and see if it was, if I could see it. It is, um, I believe it's called Retro Stitchery. I will double check that and put it in the show notes. 
Um, Bev is a dear friend of mine. We have known each other for a long time, as long as I've known Melissa too. Um, and I feel really grateful for this blogging and creative community that has brought me so many friends. And so Bev invited me to participate in the tour um, to celebrate the coming out of her new book. So I'm going to be stitching that up and then turning it into a new project that I hope will be super fun. Um, and then one more thing that I have coming up is I have been part of the design team for Riley Blake Designs to help promote new fabric lines. And I've been working with them for about 10 years. It's not something I get paid to do, but they do send me um, fabric sometimes before it's available so that I can create projects to help inspire people to use it and to sew things with it. And it has been a super fun part of my job as a blogger over the last few years. And so one of the fabric lines that I have coming up that I get to work with is a new line from Melissa of the Polka Dot Chair. And it is called Spooky Hollow. And it is a super fun Halloween line. So I am shifting gears um, over the next few days too from um, strawberries in springtime, which I will still be working on, and then mixing that in with a little bit of Halloween. So this is the main, um, one of the main prints in the darkest colorway. And I just love these little characters. <laughs> they are so cute and fun. And I think they will be so fun for fussy cutting. And there is also in this line, um, silver sparkles. So I don't know if you can see, um, but the moon and the headstones um, and the stars all have silver sparkle. And some of the other prints also have that sparkle to it, which is a super fun addition to this Halloween line to add just a little bit of extra interest and things like that. So I wanted to share with you just a couple of other prints from this line that I just think are are so much fun. So you can be watching for it. Um, if it's available, I'm not sure if it's out quite yet or if it's coming super soon, um, but it won't be long before this is available. But this icon print is probably my favorite in the whole line. It is adorable. I love the tone on tone. I love the cute little icons. Um, I love this purple color and I love the orange. And then the white is, again, all of the outlines are in that silver sparkle, which I'm not sure if you can see the shine on them, but it is so cute. So one of the other things that has been really fun um, that Riley Blake has been doing quite a bit of lately is panels um, that are coming out with a lot of their new lines. And I love the panels. Like I sewed one up in um, Riptide is a line that is fairly new by um, Rachel from Citrus and Mint Designs. And if you go, I'll link to the post I did about it in the show notes, but I made a little pillow using it, but then she also had a panel with it to create shaped shark pillows and like a big megalodon tooth pillow and stuff. And it is so fun. Um, so these panels are super fun for creating kind of extra projects. Some of them just make super easy, simple mini quilts and things like that. And then this panel um, that's included with the spooky hollow line has this treat bag pattern. So there's two different treat bags. There's a light one and a dark one. And then there's a few extra panels, um, just little squares to kind of fill out the panel for you. There's even like printed straps and stuff for you to just cut out and easily make a project. So I have a couple of fun ideas for what I'm gonna use these panels for. Um, might even show kind of a modification of the tote bag tutorial to put it together in a way that's a little bit different. And um, I'm really looking forward to sewing with that. So those will come out. My post sharing all the projects that I plan to make with that will be out next week. So I look forward to sharing with you some of those finished things in my floss tube next week, or maybe the week after, depending on if I want to give you a sneak peek or show you what's already published. It will also depend on how much work I get done. <laughs> before I record the next floss tube. So we'll kind of see how that goes. Um, I had one final thing that I wanted to show you, and this is just kind of an enabler part of the show. Um, and that is the super cute little tiny mini quilt holder. So this is a product from Riley Blake Designs. It's been designed by, I think, Stacy West from Buttermilk Basin. So she does a ton of beautiful wool applique and things. And when I was at a local quilt shop, I saw this and I knew it was exactly what I've been looking for. So I've been wanting something really fun to use to display the mini quilts that I make. So if you um, don't know me, if you're just getting introduced to me, welcome. 
Um, one thing that I feel really strongly about is creating projects that are super quick and easy to make that are accessible in both time and money. So I don't often create like large quilts and things like that because for me personally, the expense has always been a prohibiting factor. So I wanted to create projects that would be easy to make, easy to display, but that also you could do in just a weekend or a few nap times or something that you're not gonna get super bogged down with so that you can feel accomplished and like, yay, I did it, that's so awesome, I'm gonna hang this up. Um, one of these coming up floss tubes, I'm gonna tell you the story about a mini quilt that kind of saved me from depression. And um, so I just feel like there's so much power and strength in finishing things and no shame to anybody with a pile of works in progress because my pile is huge. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not judging anybody right here. Um, but it is kind of fun to pepper in if you do love the big quilts and the long, long term projects and things like that. It's just fun to have some quick finishes and easy wins. And so one of the things that I like to design are like little tiny mini quilts um, because they're so fast. You can use scraps, they finish easy, you don't feel like you can, um, you know, you're into it a ton of money. And then it's a great way to practice your skills and techniques. If you wanna get better at raj applique or you wanna get better at free motion quilting, mini quilts are a fantastic way to do that because, and, mini, and mug rugs too, which is the other reason that I make mug rugs all the time. Um, because it's just a really fun, easy way to practice your skills before you tackle those large scale projects that then you're ready to invest a lot of money in. Anyway, that was a long tangent for this cute little mini quilt holder. So this um, home pattern is one that is for purchase in my Etsy shop and it comes in two different versions. So there's this one with all the little houses and then there's this version that has a single house with a heart in it. And there's also the option for adding an extra border, which takes your little 10 inch mini quilt up to a 14 inch mini quilt. So um, I just wanted a fun way to display these mini quilts without necessarily tacking them into a wall. Although I do love them in like a gallery wall as part of, you know, throwing it in with your pictures and other things like that. Um, I thought it would be fun to have another way to display it as well as be able to kind of add some dimension to like a shelf or a mantle and still be able to incorporate some of these micro mini quilts that I've been creating. So here's the stand, it's so fun. So I did buy this at a local quilt shop. I bought this one at Pine Needles in Utah, um, but check with your local quilt shop. If they don't have them in, ask them to maybe get them in. Um, maybe look around on Etsy, but it was not super expensive. I wanna say it was, I know it was definitely less than $25, probably closer to 20, um, but I think it will make a fun little addition to displays and things like that and a fun way to show off some mini quilts. So that is my first floss tube, you guys. It's so fun to have you here. I hope you'll subscribe and follow along. Leave me comments of things you'd like to see more of, suggestions for, um, Patterns, if there's information that you want on any of the patterns, fabrics, um, techniques, and things like that, let me know. Um, I'm really working to develop my YouTube channel and my Instagram um, account into a resource for creativity and inspiration so that you too can find the power and the joy of creativity. I just think that there is a magnificent capacity in each of us to beautify the world around us. And if yours is sewing and stitching, then you have found a kindred spirit in me and I hope you'll stick around and join me for more floss tubes, lots of YouTube fun. Um, subscribe to the channel, uh, sign up for my newsletter and follow me on Instagram for all the great fun makes from Amarini Designs.